Is it true that the Vikings were great warriors? Why did the Vikings cut their teeth? What are these Scandinavians known for besides fighting, plundering, and sailing? You'll find out the answers in this episode. This is Infinity, and today I'll share the most interesting facts about the Vikings. Teeth Different people of different times can or could boast a variety of teeth. For example, in modern Japan, crooked or protruding teeth considered beautiful, and in ancient Japan, the tradition of blackening of teeth was practiced. In many African tribes, the Aborigines filed their teeth to make them sharper or pulled some teeth out altogether. The Vikings, on the other hand, cut their teeth. Archaeologists involved in excavations in Scandinavia and Northern Europe as a whole have repeatedly been convinced of this. For example, in 2009, in a mass grave in the British county of Dorset, archaeologists found the teeth of 51 people. Judging by the analysis of the bones, the remains lay in the ground for more than 10 centuries and were of Scandinavian origin. Horizontal lines were found chiseled into the front teeth of each person. All of the teeth had been ground down and were about the same size. But why did Vikings cut their teeth at all? There are two main theories on the subject. According to the first one, such notches could be on the teeth of slaves. According to the second version, which is accepted more readily, such teeth were to intimidate the enemies. Such a grin could really frighten anyone. An interesting fact, the Vikings did not have very good teeth in general. Scientists believe that the teeth of the Vikings fell out before the age of 40 because of the characteristics of the coarse bread that the Scandinavian warriors used to eat. I'm sure not many of you knew that the Vikings cut their teeth, but what everyone knows is that Vikings wore horned helmets. This is probably the most important attribute associated with the Scandinavian warriors. Although the Vikings are universally portrayed with such helmets, scientists believe that, in fact, warriors from the north did not wear these helmets. More precisely, scholars believe that the Vikings could have worn horn helmets solely for ritual and ceremonial purposes. Scientists unanimously agree that the Vikings never wore such helmet for battles because it simply wasn't practical. Such a helmet did not allow the enemy sword to slip from the head and was generally uncomfortable. Researchers who studied the Vikings' images concluded that these warriors wore ordinary leather or metal helmets for battles. Today, everyone uses the word Vikings to refer to the Scandinavian sailors who plundered, explored, and settled much of Northern Europe from the late 8th century to the mid-11th century. But not many people know that the Vikings never called themselves the Vikings. The Vikings did not consider themselves a nation at all, and the word by which we know these Scandinavian warriors appears much later. Nor were the peoples who lived with them at the same time called these warriors the Vikings. For example, the Anglo-Saxons called them pagans, Danes or Northmen. The French called the Vikings the Normans, or variations of that word. The Irish called them Northerners or strangers. And the Slavic people called the Vikings the Rus people. The word Viking itself is ambiguous and still causes many disputes in scientific circles. No one knows where the word Viking came from and when it began to be used to describe the Scandinavian warriors in general. But according to the main version, the word comes from the ancient Norwegian Vikinger, where Vike means fjord or bay. Most likely, the Vikings came to be called the Vikings because they operated in coastal waters, hiding in secluded bays and inlets. And yet, for the most part, the Vikings were not hiding, but actively traveling. Where did the Vikings set foot first? What regions did they discover? And what else is interesting about the history of these Scandinavians? We know from school that America was discovered for Europeans by Christopher Columbus, and he did that in 1492. But that's not exactly true. Yes, Columbus did sail to America in the 15th century, and it was indeed thanks to him that all the Europeans learned about the new continent. But in fact, Columbus was outrun by the Vikings, who had visited the New World as much as five centuries before him. Don't forget that the Vikings were not only warriors, but also travelers sailors and discoverers. For example, in 860, the Vikings discovered an island which we all now know very well. I'm talking about Iceland. There they founded a number of settlements. In 900, a Viking ship headed the west was set off course. And that's how the Vikings discovered Greenland. In the 10th century, Eric the Red founded the first settlement in the new icy land, and Eric the Red's son 
Leif Erikson was the first Viking to set foot on the shores of America. Warriors These campaigns to the west involved not just ordinary sailors but warriors. The Vikings are generally perceived in our minds as mighty fighters who plundered and seized almost any land. There is some truth to this. The Vikings were indeed warriors, however, their military skills are often exaggerated. Scholars believe that the military science of the Vikings was mediocrely developed. Their battle tactics were primitive. They didn't know how to conduct thought-out battles and usually engaged in a single combat, seeking to defeat their enemies through the personal skills of each individual warrior. Given this, it's not surprising that the Vikings were unable to settle down in America and colonize it properly. Sometime after their arrival in the New World, they began to be bothered by local Native Americans who didn't allow the Vikings to seize their land. At the same time, of course, the Vikings were not terrible warriors at all. Their strong card was belligerence and fearlessness. They were not afraid to die in battle, and some historians even believe that the Vikings were able to go into a state of berserk, so they didn't feel pain in battle. Scholars believe that the Vikings were helped by psychological effects in their conquests and plundering. People were simply afraid of these Scandinavian madmen who fearlessly attacked, fought one-on-ones, and ignored serious and painful wounds. Hygiene In spite of all this, the Vikings are still portrayed in pop culture as tough warriors, cool and dirty warriors. If we look back at the various movies about the Vikings, these Scandinavians indeed tend to look untidy, dirty and shabby, savages in short. But is it really so? Scientists think that such an image of the Vikings has nothing to do with reality. The Vikings were nearly the cleanest people in Europe. Despite their rude and barbaric way of life, the Vikings took great care of themselves. Scientists have also discovered that the Vikings bathed weekly, groomed their hair, bleached their hair with soda, and used dark eyeliner. Even male warriors wore this kind of makeup. The fact that the Vikings were not the savage and dirty barbarians they are portrayed as in pop culture is demonstrated not only in their preferences for hygiene, but also by their achievements in the arts. Numerous archaeological finds prove that the Vikings were among the most skillful and ingenious artists and craftsmen of medieval Europe. They reached great heights in the art of wood carving and hammered ironwork by the beginning of the 9th century. The fine animalistic and fantastic ornaments of the Broa, Boar, Yulinge, and Mammon styles are not inferior in their perfection to the notorious oriental ornaments of Arabic ligature or the beautiful Celtic patterns. Many scholars state unequivocally that the unique Viking craftsmanship put them on par with the best masters of the Middle Ages. Let us not forget that the Vikings were great shipbuilders. The Vikings built the best ships of their time and it was incredible skills that enabled them to discover so many new lands and become true masters of the seas for several centuries. There is one other thing that the Vikings were ahead of their contemporaries in, and that's women's rights. In the Middle Ages, inequality between men and women was commonplace. The situation continued in most regions around the world until the 20th century, and in some places, unfortunately, it still continues. But in the Vikings' case, it's a little different. I'm not talking about fully equal rights. The Viking society was still patriarchal, and many women were involved in the household chores, However, some female Vikings participated in battles alongside the men. Among other things, this is indicated by the Burka female Viking warrior, the name given to a woman buried in a burial chamber in Burka, Sweden. She was buried with the equipment of an elite professional Viking warrior. In addition, in the Vikings' culture, women had the right not to consent to marry a man. A marriage required the mutual consent of the parties. Finally, a Viking woman had the right to divorce her husband if he went on a campaign to another country, or if he began to behave inappropriately and aggressively in the relationship. It's amazing that women who lived more than a thousand years ago had all these rights. Now, in many societies, people can only dream of this. That's all, guys. What did you think the modern world would be like if Vikings lived to this day? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.